Welcome to the shooting show, brought to you this week from Farndale Moor, North Yorkshire. We're clearly grouse shooting, but we'll also bring you all the best news from the shooting world. The grouse season has finally arrived and with it the first chance since January to shoot driven winged game. We've assembled a crack team of guns for the occasion, experiencing a driven day run by Farndale's best, Bernard Moss. The moor is in its full glory. Britain is home to most of the world's heather moorland and that's no accident. It's thanks to a sustained keeping effort across the uplands of England and Scotland. We're all on the scene and ready to go. But first, some crucial words of wisdom from Mr. Moss. Yeah. Morning, how's it going? Yeah. We'll sort that light out later, the keeper want to do it. Keeper's wanting to do his uh, brief. So we better go and listen to Bernie. So, uh, safety wise, um, we're eight guns. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll draw numbers in a moment or two. I'll get you to the butts. Um, we have these rather nice fancy new butt sticks, which I think you used last year, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So you'll you'll know the score with them. They are on the butt. Um, Tony should have even put them in for you. All right. So they're there. And um, the idea of the butt stick, of course, is so grabs are coming through. You shoot in front. Lift over the butt stick. Get the gun behind. All right. Uh, so the idea is that they break your string and you can't shoot into the neighbouring butts along the line. I've drawn next to your. Operative Doyle. Oh, you'll have a fun day then. I'm going to be right on my toes. We've got one back to front. Morning. 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 Morning, Pete. Hi, yeah. Matt Nesfield will be doing the honours for me today. With all the guns installed, we await the start of the drive. Almost guaranteed they'll come this... Yeah, they'll creep out this corner. They love to creep out this corner, in between here and those humps there. Um, but there's Dan Luck with his orange flag. He'll yeah, come in, I'll awesome. get him up onto a high point there. Yeah. And once he's in, it's clear behind, so Roger. Roger. Yeah, go on. Right. Have fun, we'll see you in a minute too. And we're off, with my neighbouring gun getting the early spoils. <laughs> As the beaters come in, a glorious chance arises, and is duly fluffed. Well, that's the end of the first drive, a little bit light. Uh, there's maybe 40, 50 grouse go through, mostly through the middle. Uh, <coughs> I had a stretching shot uh, or two shots at, uh, it was just, ju it was killable, but uh, it's still a live grouse. And uh, I missed the first bird. A bit rusty from last year, but all for the next one. Drive number one may have been a little quiet, but who's complaining? Being out in these glorious surroundings is enough of a pleasure. 
were being treated to glorious weather too, which means harder work for beaters and dogs who are kept well hydrated between drives. Oh, right, between the, the toe, yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, between the two, so just, thing, yeah. Yeah, you, you yeah. think you'll leave them for your neighbour to have a go at, but right. actually he's leaving for you as well. Yeah, welcome. Time to get to it again. It's drive number two. Yeah, we're now onto the second drive. Uh, there should be a few more grouse on this one. Uh, drives two and three, uh, normally uh, the best two. So, yeah, looking forward to this one. Should be a few more birds. But it's not all about killing grouse. It's just being here and having the opportunity to be here. So, you know, in a fantastic place. Right from the start, it's clear that I'll be in the thick of it on this drive. And I'm not the only one being kept busy, as the grouse come through in good numbers and at lightning speeds, presenting a real challenge for the awaiting guns. That's going to die, that look. All's quiet, but we're not done yet. Much, much better drive there. Uh, shot three brace. Uh, every different type of shot imaginable, really. Uh, you've got to be careful. Uh, <clears throat> the, the, these butt hoops are brilliant, so they do remind you uh, about lifting your gun, which is fantastic. But you have to be careful, especially when there's uh, two or three or four even in the butt, including the uh, cameraman. Uh, but yeah, fantastic. Took a while to find them, but once I found them, I was uh, a lot more competent. Still top there. Come on in. Morning. Hiya. Hi. Hi. Yeah, yeah. I've got like four of you in the boat, you're Time for a light refreshment. The social side of the shoot is just as important as the action. But work's not over for the keepering team. We catch up with Bernard during the break. Coming up far now. Yeah, I was going to say. No, I've got to go. You're all right, going up the top. Collected and concentrated. So this is us uh, sorting the grouse, ageing the grouse, um, into old and young. Um, it's important to know um, how many young birds have been shot compared to how many old, so you can compare um, how big your broods were and things. And uh, it's nice to uh, nice to get a few old ones shot because the young stock uh, produce more eggs for next year. Um, we have an old grouse there with a short rounded end feather. 
and we have a young grouse there with a long pointed end feather. See the difference? Yeah. So that was an old grouse and this one's a young grouse. So uh, if we uh, find we're shooting a lot of old grouse, um, it probably means that they didn't breed as well as we thought they did um, and that we're shooting into our stock, which would mean uh, it was time to stop shooting and, uh, and leave them to breed. Um, if you're getting a nice, a nice average, which is sort of two or three to one's okay, um, three and four and five to one are, you know, excellent. Um, and if you get into, you know, four young to one old, um, you can say that you probably had a brood average around eight, um, which was really good, and that you can afford to shoot them down um, a bit lower. Um, but if you're shooting as many old as you are young, it's probably time to stop and uh, and leave them to lay some eggs for next year. No, I've tried to get Ely to make you some. And Bernard's got more in store for us, testing a brand new drive. Okay, we're on the third drive. We're doing it a little bit different this time. Normally we drive it one on, one on, one on, all the way down the moor. But uh, Bernie's put some new butts right on the boundary, so we're driving them off the chute. So it's with the wind, but uh, let's see how it goes. But uh, the grouse come back. There's one thing them going over on the boundary, and people worried about them going to stay next door. But share and share alike, I say. Two's company and three's a crowd. I'm not sure what four is, but once my four-strong team is assembled in the butt once again, the drive can get going. Now I've found my line and lead. I'm keen to make amends for earlier misses, and I soon do. But in the end, much of the action heads further down the line. In front, in front. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> we're pretty much out of it on the uh, drive before lunch. I had a, a brace, uh, second to last gun. A little bit awkward because there was a couple of cars parked in front on the road observing what we were doing which was uh, a little bit disconcerting, so we had to give them best, really. And then uh, we had a, an enjoyable lunch down at Bernie's in the Boffy, which was uh, most welcome. Good fun, nice place, uh, good company. That must have been a mighty good shot to shot. And then we're back out for the last drive. We only need eight brace, and then we'll have our bag. So it's a little drive, Hagwood Butts, small short drive, and uh, hopefully we'll be in the thick of it. But uh, time will tell. With my gun stoked up for the final drive, I await the incoming covies, and it's safe to say we get some absolute crackers. No. Brilliant. 
As the beating line closes in, there's time for one more shot behind. It's been a textbook day. Every single gun has enjoyed themselves. It's been the highlight of your day, Miles. Oh, it's, it's spending it with the cars. Yeah. The company is delightful. And which was your favourite shot, do you think? The what? Every bird that I stole from Pete. Yeah. Without fail. Yes, yeah, so, <clears throat> as I said, fantastic day. Uh, first time I've had the gun out since uh, 1st of February. Uh, that might be a lie, I was hair shooting the first week of February, so, but it's still quite a long time. So I'm making up the excuses for uh, my lack of marksmanship there, but uh, I managed to pull a few brace off for the day. Uh, 525 Browning Light, favourite gun. It's, uh, it's not the gun's fault, it's my fault. Cartridge is shot well when we were on the birds and there, bump 30 gram Ely VIP, spot on, sixes. Couldn't fault them, uh, but this is the guy who made it all happen. On to you, Benny. No, nice day. Um, beautiful day for it. We've had, uh, we'll be about on the bag, I think, that we're after. Um, and the young to old is pretty good. We'll be about three and a half, four to one, I would think, for the day. Smashing. So they've obviously done fairly well. And uh, team's not shot too badly. I'll look that way. <laughs> yeah, it's been a sort of cracking day as always here. I really enjoyed it. Um, saw lots of work. And probably more than last year, big packs as well, which makes yeah. it really two, exciting. Two drives in the middle of the day, we're really pleased with. Really good show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, big, and biggish packs as well, which is good for us. Yeah, it, it really gets the, the adrenaline going when you've got a pack of 30, 40 coming through the line. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you start to fumble before you've even fired a shot, so it's really enjoyable. Yeah. It's the, what it's all about. And then, um, yeah, I was happy with my kit as well. It's my first time with an MK38 trap one. Uh, 32 gram Zeniths again. I really love those Ely Zeniths. And yeah, shot some of the best um, grouse I've ever shot, sort of 60, 70 yarders, crossing sort of behind the line as well. Um, just a good package, and uh, no, I really enjoyed it. Very Thanks good. again. Brilliant. No, thank you. You're welcome, gents. Cheers, As Benny. As always, it's always nice to see you every year. Thank you very much. Yeah, good day up we all. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Couldn't fault it. Yeah. Wonderful. Jake had to get his head in. He did, yeah. He Jake. Good luck. Hmm? Well done, Jake the Peg. <laughs> <laughs>
Plaza had something exciting too, but it wasn't a gun. It's their new clothing range which is heading into UK retailers now. Plaza clothing has been around in Europe for the last 15 years. Um, in the UK, it's, uh, it, it, it hasn't really done, we haven't really done a great deal with it um, until this year. So this is a new launch for Blaza clothing in the UK. Um, so far, the results that we've, we've, that we've had have been absolutely fantastic, really quite overwhelming. This is based on, uh, on the Loden, Loden fabric from, from years that gone by. The team have reworked it. We've ended up with a very modern twist to the fabric. It's a three-layer bonded fabric, so it's waterproof, windproof, very lightweight, but very durable. Um, you'll notice as well the, uh, the, the overall look and appearance of the fabric is very different to what you would normally see um, from lots of other soft shell type uh, brands or manufacturers. Uh, a small storm hood tucked away in the, in, the, in the back of the neck here, literally just very easily comes out to deal with that sudden downpour, whether you're sat in a high seat or out on the on the riverbank, um, I've even had we've even had some uh, some of our consumers that have got into this product um, saying, "Well, I'm actually going to wear this out skiing as well." And why not? Yeah, absolutely. It's a really true multifunctional piece. Um, the branding is, uh, is is very subtle. It sits in very nicely. It doesn't mean that it's screaming shooting. It's a very nice everyday type product and that goes all the way through the through the range that we have. And while we're at the Blaza stand we got word from Georgia Moon on what it's like to be a sponsored shooter. Um, so so far this year I've done the double, I won the English and the British um, for the sporting. Um, I've also got the England team for the sporting and I've got the England team for the FITASC. So I've just done the home international sporting. We won ladies gold and then I'm going out to Northern Ireland next weekend for the FITAS. Yeah, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the help of Plaza and especially John Bidwell as well, my coach. I speak quite closely to them in Germany as well as in the UK. So I speak to Alex back in Germany. I update her regularly and I also update Jess and Robert regularly with how I get on. And anything I need, I just email them or ring them and it's very helpful. <laughs> I shoot the Blaza F3 Vantage, um, I have a pink F3, so yeah, it's customised in that way and also on my trigger guard it's got my name engraved in pink. Can you, can you give us any tips for any uh, budding sporting shooters out there? Just to keep practising and practise perfectly, don't over practise and mean every shot and it will just come naturally. Night vision was flying off the shelves at Scott Country, in particular the new forward front mounted unit was causing a sensation. So this is a front mounted night vision attachment, so it's designed to convert your original day scope into night vision. So with a bayonet fitting you choose for which particular objective lens size you have, it snaps on using the bayonet fitting and transforms it to night vision. The DF75 um, had, um, the way the system worked is it had your optics above your line of sight, so there was a bit of software trickery involved in zeroing it to your own optics. This here, once you've set it up and aligned it for the first time, that's it. You can take it on and off as often as you want, no need to re-zero. So you can swap it between different rifles and it'll maintain point of impact. And it's completely point of impact stable as well, using the new metal adapter. Man size detection range, 450 metres. Usable range foxing, probably out to a couple hundred metres. A little bit more if you increase the uh, infrared luminosity you've got on it. I think it looks, it looks a good bit of kit, especially the fact that you can mount it on the front of your day scope. Um, it, you haven't then got to have a dedicated night vision rifle, yep. so uh, yeah, I mean that's going to be a big plus to a lot of shooters, I should think. It is, it's got a lot of new features as well, the, the stream vision where you can stream it to an iPad, so if you've got a shooting buddy with you, he can see what you're doing. You can video record straight to it as well, so you record any, any footage. Once you snap it off, you can attach a, an optional eyepiece to it and use it as a handheld spotter as well, so it's got a lot of variables in terms of performance and function. And down at the Napier stand, the new truck click got a public showing for the very first time. So this is the new truck click. It's designed to lift any carcass. It will lift the smallest munt jack right up to the largest boar. It will easily lift 200 kilos. Um, the good thing about it is that it will actually fit onto any vehicle with a tow hitch. So you can fit it onto um, a truck, uh, any ATV and uh, a, a quad bike. Even a quad bike can get it on quite easily. It's a way forward is to keep everything off the ground while you're gralicking it because it's obviously it's going into the food chain so you don't want to get it dirty when you're uh, preparing it. So you can set this up in minutes. Literally you can just clip it on and uh, nice and easy away you go. Comes complete with the uh, with the auto lift, the, uh, the aquasac, 
and, uh, and, and the unit itself all in a waterproof bag so you can just chuck it in the back of your truck there and it'll be absolutely fine. Finally, away from new products, we saw a red deer head at the Basque stand which might just be a record breaker. Brian, right, we've measured it. Um, beautiful head, as we've already discussed. You got 188.49 points, so it's the biggest red stag that we've measured ever. Um, Scottish red stag. I understand there might be one that's been shot on Aaron that is a touch bigger, but we don't have to kind of look at that. But beautiful head, so I've been through the um, sheet with you. There's the thing that takes pride of place now on your mantelpiece. And um, one absolutely superb uh, red stag. I spotted it in 2016, uh, early April, still in velvet, and uh, I watched it and watched it right up to about the rut time. Come back the following April 2017 and uh, seen him early again in velvet, watched him grow the same thing and I says, well he's not going to beat me this time so put a lot of time and effort in and I watched him most nights and every time I could anyway and it just worked out perfect for me. Some of the biggest uh, stags in Scotland come from the area, we've got a good feed, but they are traditional hill stags, they, they live up quite high in the forest, but they've got shelter and food so they can come out, so generally the South Ayrshire, Galloway area, onto the Isle of Arran, will you know, quite frequently produce very, very good uh, exceptional heads. I mean, this is an exceptional head, but we'll be pushing up into this area uh, quite frequently. That's all from the Midland, we'll be back next year. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching, please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.